Welcome back. We are here looking at the indexes and we are going to uh, have a technical analysis of the um, S&P 500, the Dow Jones and the Nasdaq. And uh, last week was, well, to be fairly honest, horrible. Um, we can basically see how much we basically fell. We went from a high of a uh, uh, 3,586, and we fell all the way down to the low zero, 3,313. So we had a fall in the of the S&P 500 of around 7.74 percent, and uh, and that is only within five days of trading. That is one of the fastest falls in technically in history, and that basically says a lot because. Really, the world economy is crumbling. The United States economy is doing uh, horribly. So unemployment is at the, is extremely high. Um, unemployment benefits are still historically high, and the GDP is falling off a cliff. And we have the S and P five hundred at the moment now lower than the prior to the coronavirus. But we basically were significantly higher than prior to the coronavirus. Um, and of course, this didn't make any sense. Still doesn't make any sense. But it's basically the Fed pumping liquidity into the stock market. And that is basically increasing uh, the value of these stocks. Uh, it is cheap to lend. It is basically money is just everywhere and that basically people are just pumping money into where they uh, can invest and for most people that is the stock market so this wasn't really uh, surprising uh, I think the most surprising was basically how fast uh, this market fell so at this moment it is uh, supported at the 50 moving average it is this red line is the 50 moving average and whether or not we break uh, further down from here is a question. If we break the 50 moving average, if we have a red candle that is basically close below the 50 moving average, we will go much lower. The next uh, moving average is the 100 moving average is down here. And that is basically at 3,163. We'll, of course, have the uh, 3,200 level that will be uh, supportive, uh, support uh, basically is around here. Um, if we bounce from there, maybe. I, if, I would probably say that we'll bounce from the 100 moving average if we break the 50 moving, 50 moving average. If we look at the technical indicators, they are horrible at the moment. We can see the MACD is pointing significantly downwards with the distance between these lines just show you how uh, bearish this market is at the moment. Um, we are not oversold, meaning that we could have uh, probably a week or a week and a half uh, more of, um, of a bearish momentum before we basically uh, go up again. Uh, we can see the stochastic is about to, basically, it has crossed and it is pointing significantly down. And uh, at this point, I would not be surprised if we went all the way down to the red line before we get, went up again. Uh, the Bollinger Band, uh, we are at the bottom of the Bollinger Band, uh, but at the moment, I would pay attention to the stochastic. I would pay attention to to the MACD. These indicators are screaming that we are basically um, about to have an, another massive pullback. Um, so at this point, I would wait to basically enter the market. There's no reason uh, to enter the market at this point. If we were to bounce from the 50 moving average, we have to basically see a close above uh, uh, this uh, candlestick here in order to confirm that we'll go higher. If we have a close below the 50 moving average, that is an indication that we will go lower from here. But if we look at the historical 
uh, pattern of the of the of the of the S and P five hundred. We go to the weekly chart. Um, then we have basically been in. Let me get this. We have a historical resistant line here which we tested uh, and we, we didn't manage to basically break it. We went past it and then we pulled back significantly. Um, and we also have a, a support line here. And if we look at this, every single time we get close to this um, resistant line, we have a pullback. We had one in back in, in 2019. Then we went back up uh, and in February or in March, I mean, in 2020, we also had this massive pullback. And now we're back at this support level. Uh, whether or not we have a significant pullback similar to this one and this one at this point, uh, that is to be seen. We could have. It may well be that we will uh, will have a significant. It just seems too early. If you basically see the distance between these uh, two pullbacks, uh, this is about one year. So, but the growth that we have been on since March has just been stupid. To be fairly honest, to go all the way from. Um, um, we had uh, well, basically in the March, uh, we had, this is basically February to to uh, to uh, March. We had the market fall thirty five percent in only a few weeks. It was the fastest decline in the in the S and P five hundred in history. And from from uh, that basically, this is when this is uh, twenty seven of of March until um, until September, we have an increase of 62.15%. That is that's ridiculous. Um, if you if you if you just think about that, uh, S and P from 100 usually increases at an average increase of, uh, in time of nine percent, and in four months time or five months time. You have an increase, uh, increase the value of sixty-two percent. That just enters bubble territory, and I I usually don't like talking about bubbles, but but this is just a parabolical move, and there is no reason why we were basically supposed to have this move. This was technically the Fed and the United States Senate, uh, uh, the Congress, is saving the stock market. They haven't saved anybody else because um, at this at this point, I think like thirty million Americans that will basically lose their um, they will be evicted and will lose their their homes. Really. 30 million people will basically go on the street. What will they buy? Where will basically consumption come from if people don't even have, have um, money to stay in their homes? The, the outlook for the U.S. economy is extremely bleak. I don't expect those 30 million people to lose their homes. That's just those 30 million people to go out and buy an iPhone. Or buy a Tesla. Where is that kind of consumption going to come from? Um, are you going to focus on China? Uh, oh, probably a long shot. Um, Europe is in probably is a very similar situation. People are not spending money on their iPhones or a Tesla at the moment. They technically just want to get through these difficult times. Um, so. We'll probably see a massive pullback. Uh, this chart is the 20 moving average first. It is the 3,200 level. And I wouldn't be surprised if we go farther than that. Um, at this point, 
just stay away from this market. It's the best thing to do is just wait until basically see when this market stabilizes because this increase has just made this market so unstable. And it's so unrealistic that we'll basically have a, a massive increase like this again because this was just the Fed pumping uh, liquidity into the market. So if we look at the look at technical indicators again, they are extremely bearish at this moment, uh, indicating that we will go uh, probably go and break this 50 moving average and go significantly lower from here. Uh, yes, so to the Dow Jones. So the Dow Jones has not had this parabolical move as the S&P 500 and, uh, and, uh, and uh, NASDAQ. However, it still has had this move, uh, which still is quite ridiculous considering uh, that, uh, that the state of the world economy. We still have the pandemic out there. Things are not going back to normal. Uh, as long as uh, there is no vaccine. Uh, and then still, if we find a vaccine today, it still will take months, probably half a year or maybe a year, before people will get their hands on that vaccine. So just keep that in mind. People are not going to consume the same way because they will not have this, uh, their jobs to be able to do that. But at this moment, um, the... We also had a massive fall in the in the Dow Jones. We are supported at the 40 exponential moving average. We have the 50 moving average underneath. And I do not expect this market to fall quite as far as S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. The main reason why the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ are, are falling that significantly is because of the tech uh, companies that uh, have had this massive run uh, recently. So we'll probably go and test the 50 moving average and then bounce from there. Um, that is around the 27,000. If we were to break the 50 moving average, we'll go down to the 300 moving average, which is here. That's 26,500. And um, I think we'll have significant support um, at the, the 200 moving average, which is around here. That's around 26,000. Uh, the technical indicators are also really negative for the Dow Jones. The MACD is, uh, is pointing significantly lower. The RSI is pointing significantly lower. And the stochastic is pointing basically straight down. So we'll probably go uh, lower from here, but it will not have the dra drastic moves as, the, as we have seen in the S&P 100 and also in the NASDAQ. So speaking of the Nasdaq, this was the this was a horrible trade for me for this week, uh, but uh, but I see a lot of potential um, basically trading the Nasdaq because I expect this market to go lower. Um, it has tested the fifty moving average uh, three times. Uh, once on Wednesday, Thursday, and then on Friday, technically closed below the 50 moving average. We had a massive pullback, and that may indicate that we'll go higher from here on Monday. But at this point, short time pullbacks are, I think, opportunity basically for shorts. And if you just look at the distance between the 50 moving average and the 200 moving average, it's really ridiculous. There's no time, yeah, basically here before the, the crash, that we have this, this distance between the 50 moving average and the 200 moving average. This market has got way ahead of itself, especially Tesla, uh, Apple, Google, all these massive tech stock um, just had 
crazy uh, growth the last few months. And at some point, that bubble had to burst. And it burst um, at this level of uh, um, 12,439. And it fell all the way down around 12% in a week. That is bad. 12% in a week, that, that is really significant. And you can basically see that also on the MACD. We have some uh, way to go. If we were to go into this territory here, it will get really ugly. We are not oversold yet. And uh, the RSI is also pointing downwards. Uh, the bullish job, we are at the bottom of the bullish, but I would not pay much attention to the bullish bad at the moment. It just shows the, uh, the volatility here. But the stochastic is, this is not a good sign. When we have this sign of the stochastic, we basically see it here. Uh, we have massive pullback. And this uh, this pullback usually doesn't end until we get down to the to the really lows of the stochastic. Uh, if we go back to, um, we can basically see it here. This is the massive pullback in March, after the beginning of the coronavirus. And we haven't had a pullback similar to that one uh, ever since. We basically just stayed above the green line uh, and we've been extremely bullish all this run at this point probably go all the way down to the to this uh, 50 moving average here in the stochastic which is at uh, 9500 I, I that is probably too far I would expect the most we will go down is around 10,000. So the main resistant area here is uh, 10,500. Then we have the 100 moving average here, which is at 10,344. And then we have, of course, the very psychological um, uh, highs of the prior to the coronavirus at the 9,791. But also 10,000, I would expect to be a significant support. People will basically uh, jump onto the that level, both the 10,500 and the 10,000 level. Uh, it, and then this market probably will go higher. It will go higher. We live in a new economy than we did prior to the coronavirus. Uh, and we will go back. Uh, the world will become more virtual. Uh, tech companies will dominate, and uh, and uh, the old industries of uh, of um, shopping centers and so on that will basically be the past. Uh, we're not going back to people physically going to stores to buy to buy their goods. We will basically be clicking goods online, and therefore these tech companies will flourish which they basically have they've earned more money in uh, the coronavirus period than they did prior to the crisis and that is all due to the shift in in the world economy going from a more uh, person to person uh, buying and to basically e-commerce uh, but we got way ahead of ourselves we were significantly uh, overbought the the MACD was uh, all the way back up here, and that basically indicated that we would go lower. Um, this was my worst trade probably of the entire year. Uh, I expected uh, the market to basically bounce off the twenty exponential moving average, which it uh, had done uh, previously. We saw it all the way here. Uh, once, uh, one, two, three, four, five times. And then I also expected it to bounce here, but it didn't. Uh, it went all the way down to um, 11,000, uh, basically 11,000. So, well, that happens. Um, but at this moment, I expect this market to go lower and that will be a really good opportunity to basically invest in, in, um, in the index or invest in basically 
Apple or Tesla or some of these companies, they will be the dominating companies in the future. Um, they're way overvalued at the moment, but when their valuation gets, gets, um, goes down, or their basically their stock price goes down, then it's a fantastic opportunity to basically hold on. If you look at Apple, we can see that Apple has basically um, gotten close to the 50 moving average. If it breaks the 50 moving average, it will go down all the way down to 100 level. Uh, the next uh, moving average is basically the 100 uh, moving average here is at 95. But it basically opens up the form uh, for Apple stock to go all the way down to 100 and even to a 95 level. And um, yes, that is a good opportunity. This is a company that will continue increasing. It has um, uh, good dividends that they pay out. Um, we see, for example, here a significant um, support area. And I do expect Apple to go down to this support area before going higher. Uh, we can see all the technical indicators are showing that this, um, this stock is about to go significantly lower. And that, of course, will also drag the NASDAQ lower because there are only, I think, five companies that are 50% of, uh, of the NASDAQ, of the value of the NASDAQ. So... Um, uh, Apple, um, Google, uh, Amazon, and so on. So if those companies go go uh, stock decrease in value, then they'll drag the Nasdaq also with them. Uh, the other companies are technically, yeah, uh, pointless at the moment. They're they're. It is basically those five companies that you should pay a penny attention to if you want to see whether or not the market will go up or down. So hopefully you find this uh, video helpful. At this point, I, it's probably the best idea just to sit on the sidelines, look what technically happens. If we go higher from here, we need a close above these candlesticks. And if we were to break the 50 moving average, and then have the Nasdaq again, we need a close above this candlestick here, which is around uh, 11,555. If we do that, we will go higher. If we basically have a close below the 50 moving average underneath this candle here, we will probably go much lower. So at this point, it's basically better to sit on the sidelines, wait until what basically happens. And also we have the Fed meeting on um, on Wednesday and it is it would be surprising if we have a significant break uh, to the upside uh, before we know what the Fed is going to do because that means if we break to the upside we'll go all the way to the all-time high and if the Fed has some negative news then we'll go crashing down again and at that's for that. That's the reason why basically on Monday and probably on on uh, Tuesday and the beginning of Wednesday we'll just see choppiness uh, within this area here. Uh, probably we could break lower, but I don't expect us to break significantly higher before we know what the Fed will do. So. Uh, you're welcome to support the channel by subscribing and hitting the like button and, uh, and uh, the bell button. And uh, uh, good luck. These are quite crazy times to trade these uh, indexes. Um, so uh, best of luck. Thank you very much.